yes, like every voluntary initiative, is people talking like you and me, a group of you sitting there and saying, oh, you know, there's this problem and so on, and someone having dinner together and so on, saying, what if we did this? And then if you have the alchemy of three or four people of like mind suddenly thinking, this is really important, we've got to do something about this, it. like the way Ben was set up, Black Environment Network, was the same, people sitting around dinner saying, how come we don't see any ethnic minorities in the environmental sector? And someone else sort of says, yeah, you're quite right. And someone says, why don't we do something about it? And the issue was so important to that small group of people that it would not go away. It keeps having, happening, that conversation over more dinner, more coffee, and so on. And people sit there and say, yes, we want to do it, but how? This is a search for a solution, especially when it is very new as a model. So it took, again, months, years before suddenly something happens because you keep talking about it, you talk about it to other people and so on. And one of the groups of people inside that first steering group, of which I was one, for Black Environment Network, was Amanda Bennett. She worked in NCVO, the National Council of Voluntary Organizations. And one day she was talking to the the chief exec, and the chief exec at that time, luckily, was an ethnic minority, Usha Patel. And Usha said, oh, that's interesting. She says, yeah, ethnic minorities, urban environment, nature. That's quite interesting. Why don't you have a desk? We'll give your group a desk. And that's how it started. In those days, NCVO was very, very keen about small groups. They no longer do this. They only deal with nationals now. But in those days, if they spotted a small, innovative, interesting project, one of the things they did was give you a desk. Free, come into your desk, use the professionals in the building, talk to us, do what you like. If you have a little bit of money, we'll give it to you. And the, the thing of how I came to be part of this was interesting, because I was still working as an artist. And... Um, I came onto the steering group and so on. At one point, I talked to the then chair, Julian. I said, I said, Julian, you know, I'm not really the steering type, I'm the doing type. And Julian says, well, then, if we ever got any money, why don't you go and do it? And that's exactly what happened. And our first lot of money came from NCVO. You know what they did? Again, they were creative and they were legitimate. They said, well, urban people, ethnic minorities. And Amanda worked in the, in the urban unit. And Usha says, well, you know, we've got a little budget. At the end of every month, if we have any money, you can have it. So I used to work one day a week when there was money for one month, two days a week if there was more money, no days a week if there was nothing left in the budget. But that is how we started. And because we started and we talked about it and what we were trying to do and so on, People come in who were actually interested. And the then English nature, one of the people who's very well known, he's passed away now, George Barker, he was the person who actually started the idea of urban wildlife. And when he heard about what we're doing, he said, urban wildlife, nature, ethnic minorities, well, worth a little experiment, isn't it? And so one day I remember so clearly, I was sitting at my desk in NCVO and George Barker appeared with Charlie Ruggioni who ran the grant scheme. And they said, we we'll come to give you a grant. It's three months, show us what you can do. So I had a full-time job for three months. And in three months flat, we set up the very first three regional forums, London, Birmingham, and Bristol. And George and English Nature were so impressed that they then gave us a one-year contract to expand it and to do and to lay down the basis for Black Environment Network. We never looked back, never looked back. We did so much. We got other grants and so on, and we just built on everything we did because there was a need. That is the other thing about groups forming. So if you form around something with a real need, and you're new and you're looking for a way, you'll be funded sooner or later. <laughs>